As we saw previously, the test process is context-dependent. Similarly, software development lifecycle model is context-dependent. And we are going to address second objective of the session. Identify reasons why software development lifecycle models must be adapted to the context of project and product characteristics. Now let's understand software development lifecycle model. Selection procedures. So what are the factors that affect the selection of software development lifecycle models? Now let's look at this statement. Software development lifecycle models must be selected and adapted to the context of project and product characteristics. So, the context of the project and the product characteristics decides which software development model you select. Next is product characteristic. What type of product do you want to build? That is what will decide which development model you choose. Next is project goal and type. The goal of your project will also influence the decision. After that is business properties. This talks about the kind of resources you have available, the type of organization you're working in. Then you have time to market. The product's release schedule can also decide what type of model you choose. Say, if you want to release it early, then you can go for the Agile model, since it's a very fast process. Project Context Just like the product characteristics or goal, the context will also affect your choice of a development model. And finally, you have project and product risk. This is a very important factor. What is the risk associated with your product? Is it safety-related or security-related? This consideration will also have to be kept in mind when selecting a model. So these are all the factors that can influence model selection. But you might be asking what context means here. The context is which type of system you want to develop. Developing on whether you want to develop a security lifecycle model or a safety critical system, you would choose different development models. Now we'll get into some good examples, which will help you clear up how software development lifecycle models are selected or combined. First, we will see how test level is combined with test activities to achieve project context. The first example is one where we combine test level and test activities. This is to achieve product context. Now here's the example. Suppose we have to do integration testing for a test level, and our testing activity is interoperability testing. We want to combine the two to achieve our project context. So let's look at this project context that requires the combination of these test level and activities. Integration of commercial of the self software product into a large system. This means there are smaller components of a software that will be combined to create the larger system. Or if you have a large system, another company can provide a small software for support which can be integrated into your system. And sometimes, the purchase team may perform interoperability testing at the system integration level. So when the team is carrying out the integration testing, they will do the interoperability testing too. Let's now move to the second example. Here, again, we combine test level and test activities to achieve project context. Suppose you have a functional or non-functional testing level and operational testing activity. We combine the two for a project context. Here's what that context looks like. We want to do an acceptance level testing. Sometimes functional or non-functional acceptance and operational testing are combined together during acceptance testing. So, to achieve acceptance level testing, we combine the test level and test activities here. Now, we'll get into some good examples, which will help you clear up how software development lifecycle models are selected or combined to achieve project goal. 
Now we take a look at how different models are combined. Here we have two models of software development lifecycle, Model 1 and Model 2. We are not combining test levels and activities here, but two software development models in order to achieve the project goal. Now, suppose the product is in the prototype state. Prototype means that it is the initial or starting stage. For this, you can use the incremental model. Over time, you can develop small features little by little. But if the product is in the development stage, then you want to use the Guile method. This will let you get the product ready to launch into the market as early as possible. But if the product is in the maintenance stage, like when the customer comes back with a defect and you have to correct it, then you use the V model. So as you can see, we use different software development lifecycle models to achieve the final project goal. We use incremental model for the prototype stage, the Guile method for the development stage, and V model for the maintenance stage. So you had a single product and different decisions at different levels. Now, on to the second example. Here you have a single product, but different objects. However, you're still combining different models to achieve project goal. Suppose a company creates a device, develops a product, and provides a service. For each of these objects, they can use separate software development cycle models. In order to provide service, they can choose to use one model. To develop a product, they can use another. And to manufacture a device, they can utilize yet another model. So in this video, we saw a few examples of how different models can be combined, or test levels and activities can be combined to achieve a project goal or context.